Good evening. Monitoring and control of projects is one of the core responsibilities of a project manager. The larger the project, the more formalized this monitoring and control process should be. Uh, this type of control of projects is usually one of the areas where organizations typically fail in regards to project management. Chapter 13 details how a monitoring process should be defined for properly controlling projects. Additionally, the chapter goes into details on the key metrics for evaluating where a project stands in relation to budget and schedule and the formulas that are often used to calculate these key metrics. Many of these key metrics are also core concepts related to the PMI certification exam. Uh, you will have questions related to many of these concepts and we'll actually be expected to calculate these as examples that are provided in the PMI certification exam. There are four core aspects to develop under a project, uh, project monitoring system. These four aspects include, one, knowing what data is to be collected from the project, number two, how, when, and who will collect the data, three, knowing how to analyze the data, and four, developing some type of status reports for the project team and management. The first step is determining the data that is to be collected. And the data that's collected should answer these key areas uh, displayed on the slide. Again, with most of these focusing on the impact of the project schedule and budget. Typically, you as the project manager will be expected to collect the project data. I've had instances where I was able to bring in some of the help with the management of collecting this data, although this is usually only available to those project managers working on very large projects with a significant budget. Uh, inversely, I have been able to use project tools like Primavera and Stannis and Microsoft Project Server to help collect some of this data automatically. Uh, this greatly helps automate this collection of data, uh, but there are significant costs usually associated with the licensing for these tools. So it's going to be something uh, you have to weigh and determine whether it's appropriate for your project. Data is typically collected weekly. At least that's what I found to be the most effective time frame. And this is done through some type of detailed timesheet noting uh, the project tasks. However, if the data is collected manually, collecting uh, anything less than a week is almost uh, prohibitive. You'll, you'll just never be able to get the project team uh, to provide for any type of daily reporting. Again, many automated project tools like Microsoft Project Server provide functionality to allow the project team to enter their time themselves uh, through project tasks that have been defined in the system. And then you as a project manager will be able to pull this data out through tables that are uh, used to hold that data. Again, it's typically the project manager who will need to pull this data together and analyze it. And as I've outlined, the project tools can help with this uh, to quite a degree. You'll be expected to provide various forms of status reports with the content and structure of these reports based on the audience uh, the reports are for. Generally speaking, the status report should list the specific items that have been completed or started since the last reporting period, the current state of the project, upcoming tasks for the next reporting period, and an outline of uh, all the problems and issues that need to be addressed, and if possible to note how these issues and problems will be addressed. The executive leadership should be getting status reports that know what the overall status is for the uh, project budget and project schedule, along with an outline of any significant project issues requiring their attention to address or approve an action on. Project team members will want to know what their status is on individual project tasks, as well as uh, any delay for project tasks that immediately precede their own. I typically provide a written and oral presentation for these, uh, weekly status report along with a weekly status meeting for the project team and then uh, typically a monthly project update status report and meeting for the executive leadership. Project management, a common term and concept you'll hear about is the project baseline. Part of project planning is establishing the project baseline. Once you have reached the point taking a work breakdown structure uh, and creating a plan where the resources, dates, and costs have all been established. 
This baseline helps to establish a starting point to gauge the performance of the project based on the actual results of what is being done once a project starts. It's the concept of comparing planned to actuals. Chapter 13 talks about establishing this baseline, measuring performance by pulling in the data already discussed for tax, tasks uh, that are being completed, comparing these two, and then taking action based on the differences found between the planned versus actual totals. The Gantt chart, uh, like that provided through the Microsoft project, is one typical method for demonstrating where planned versus actual results are. Uh, chapter 13 shows how a Gantt chart is typically used to show the planned versus actual results. The chart on the top shows the planned timeline for the project tasks. Uh, the bottom Gantt shows the actual completed against the baseline. Uh, based on the actuals, you can see the remaining durations. Uh, the estimate to completion is calculated based on the actuals that have been collected to date, which in the example shown is through period 6 for this project. Uh, here's an example of uh, the use of the planned versus actuals in a Gantt chart by using Microsoft Project. It's something that we'll talk about uh, next week uh, in the class we have scheduled in the lab. Another tool used to track project progress, at least for schedules, and make some estimates for project uh, completion is the project schedule control chart. This was demonstrated in our chapter. The x-axis on this chart notes the reporting period being measured. In this case, there are 13 periods shown. Uh, and the y-axis notes the number of duration time periods. This could be hours, days, or weeks, typically that the project is ahead or behind the project baseline. Uh, the project baseline is represented by the dotted line in the middle of the chart. For reporting periods that are behind schedule, they show up uh, below the dotted line. For reporting periods that are ahead of schedule, they show up above the dotted line. The textbook mentions this type of graph is particularly effective with project milestone events. Uh, in case you aren't aware, project milestones are significant events that have no duration associated with them in the project. Some examples of milestone event would be a uh, project approval step, uh, a requirement sign-off step, and the approval to go live with a particular project. The concept of earned value is a key one to know as a project manager. Likely many, like many uh, early project principles, this concept was devised by the Department of Defense back in the 1960s. It is one that has endured uh, even to today. And it's one that you will see in the certification exam from PMI as well is really a core foundational concept you need to know as a project manager. The key to this is that uh, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it uses a project budget baseline for the tasks that are scheduled, which is otherwise known as the planned value, or PV, to help time phase the project budget. And through this, monitor the status of the project by collecting actual results to help define whether a project is behind schedule or not. The concepts of earned value the value of work completed, the planned value, the baseline costs of the work planned are foundational uh, to the other concepts and formulas that help determine the variances to the project costs and schedule, <coughs> excuse me, based on actual results. These formulas help a project manager determine what the estimated cost to complete a project will be. If this information is valuable in order to make decisions and to approve more project funding or even to stop projects, that are so far over budget that uh, uh, the ROI is no longer relevant or possible for a project. So again, key concepts. Uh, a cheat sheet related to this is available in Springboard uh, for this week's information. <clears throat> there is a five-step process to help with developing a time phase project budget plan and project monitoring process. <clears throat> the first step is one that you've all participated in before, which is defining the tasks necessary to complete a project by developing a work breakdown structure. This is followed by something else you've touched on regarding the development of work and resource schedule, where you eventually time phase in work packages 
by assigning the resources with the costs associated with their work uh, for the particular task they're working on. All this helps to define the plan value for the project, the project baseline. Since this is defined at the budgetary level, the plan value is provided in monetary terms. Plan value of $40,000, for example, uh, for a specific project. The final tasks are to collect the costs for the work that is actually completed at the end of a work package or task. These results are called the actual cost, or AC. The key to this collection of actual costs is to determine the percentage of work completed for the tasks that were scheduled for the time phase being measured. For example, if the percent complete for the work at, at the end of reporting period is 75% and the plan value calculated at the end of the same reporting period was 40000 then the earned value is 30000 this is calculated by taking the plan value and multiplying it by the percent complete. In this case, $40,000 by 75% or 0.75. Uh, the percent complete rule uh, is one is key that, is, that can be key to the calculation of earned value and the use of project time phase baselines. To be objective in determining status of a percent of completion on any given task, there must be some type of gauge to determine where that stands, whether it's lines of code, bundles of shingles, uh, etc., depending on the project. <clears throat> Another concept is that at some point, usually around 80 to 90 percent complete, no other amount earned is added to the task or work package until it's 100 percent complete. Uh, this points to a problem I've talked about in past projects I've worked on where I continually get 99% uh, complete on a task week in and week out. This, these type of rules help overcome those type of issues. Again, the importance of a project baseline is critical to form an anchor point to monitor a project and determine what the status is on the project throughout its life. The baseline is used as a summation for time phase budgets, again, to monitor project status. It's also used to determine payments for projects that are actually progress-based rather than just time and materials. Usually, only direct costs, uh, these include labor, materials, and equipment, are included in the baseline, as these are the ones that are directly under the control of the project manager. Other indirect costs are not typically used uh, to calculate the baseline or planned value since they're not directly chargeable to the specific task or work package. Uh, these type of indirect costs typically include things like rent and insurance. There are two main methods of variance to calculating project baseline to actuals analysis. Both methods use the earned value for comparison to determine the level of variance. One is to determine the schedule variance and the other form is to determine cost variance. These formulas use the earned value as compared to the expected schedule value for one, the planned value, and the actual cost for the other. For both variance formulas, a positive is good and a negative is bad. The first variance calculation, the cost variance, indicates if the cost incurred to date is more or less than what was originally planned for up to this point in the project tells you if you're under or over budget for the project. The second variance calculation, schedule variance, calculates the value of all work packages or project tasks completed to date compared to plan and whether a project is ahead or behind schedule. One point to understand in this is that this formula does not take into account whether a work package is on the critical path or not. Example was provided in our textbook showing a cost schedule graph to help visually show project status. The graph shows the three key groups of measures as identified at a specific point in the project. And through this information, try to determine what the result is likely to be for the project based on the information compiled to date. One group of measures is the planned value. Uh, you'll note here a new concept that the total budget for the project is called another term called the budget at completion or BAC. These help form the baseline 
and the starting point for monitoring the project. The actual costs are pulled from the information provided throughout the project, and again, the timesheets that we talked about earlier. Uh, the earned value is then calculated from the plan and actual cost, and they use as a basis to determine the cost and schedule variances, which are displayed on the graph as well. The textbook then went through an example of the five-step process we just talked about, uh, uh, using uh, some basic assumptions which they've outlined here. Uh, they're not always assumptions that will be true for every project, but for the exercise of an example uh, are used here. The first step, as already defined, includes defining the work breakdown packages with the cost and account information being provided in those. The next step is to develop work and resource schedules as represented on the scan chart for the work packages that were defined in the first step. The third step is to define a time phase budget using the information originally provided in the work packages. On this worksheet, you can see that the duration is defined on the left hand side with the early start finish and late start finish information. On the right hand side, you see the cost or budget defined for these work packages or project tasks with the plan value for each work package defined in the middle based on the cost information that was calculated. At the bottom of the worksheet, you see the totals for the plan value based on each time reporting period as well as a running total for the plan value for the entire project. The total amount on the far right hand side is the total budget at completion which for this example is 320. Here's an example of a project status report provided uh, at reporting period number three in the project with the actual cost and the percent completed provided and which were used to calculate the earned value and the cost and schedule variances. You can see that a cost variance started uh, with task A and reporting period number two. The task was completed on time, but it cost more to complete uh, this particular task uh, compared to what was budgeted. In reporting period number three, you can see that the cost variance continues and is up to a minus 24, but the project is ahead of schedule uh, based on the progress made with task number D. My reporting period five, the cost overruns uh, continue to grow, and now there's a schedule variance that outlines the project is behind schedule. Task D, which appeared to be ahead of schedule and likely had slack built into it, is now behind schedule in addition to task C, which is well behind schedule at this point. By reporting period seven, the delays seen in the earlier schedule variance lead to task E not starting on time, likely because task C is on the critical path of the project and is still not completed. The project is behind schedule and over budget more than two-thirds way through uh, the planned or at least uh, uh, the original project timeline. The cost schedule graph calculated for this uh, project example visually demonstrates what the status report showed. This is reflected in the negative values provided for the cost variance and schedule variance. The Gantt chart shows the baseline versus actual results to the project timeline for this example. The remaining duration that is calculated outlines that the project is two reporting periods behind and will take 13 uh, periods now to complete rather than the original 11 reporting periods that were defined uh, as the baseline for the project. This chart shows that the schedule and cost variance, uh, what those amounts are by work package, helping to clearly identify those tasks and work packages that had significant cost or schedule variances compared to what was originally planned. There are also some performance indices that also help in monitoring project status in regards to uh, the cost or schedule efficiency and to help to identify project trends. 
Uh, the first, the cost performance index, helps to measure the cost efficiency of the work completed to date. So of every dollar worked on the project, the ratio that is calculated helps to just demonstrate the return value. For example, a cost performance index of 0.70 means a project is getting 70 cents of value for every dollar that's expended on the project. Many organizations have found that this is one of the most reliable and stable measures for project status. It helps to identify an early warning to cost overruns on projects. The scheduling performance index measures the scheduling efficiency uh, to date for a project. While the value is demonstrated in the same type of ratio, it helps to define if a project is ahead or behind schedule based on the value of the ratio. Two other indices, not as generally used as CPI or SPI, but are helpful in determining uh, uh, the status on a project is the percent complete. Uh, these two indices are both budget-based, with one based on the plan costs or budget and the other based on actual costs for the budget. The percent complete index by budget, PCIB, helps to indicate the percentage of total budgeted dollars that have been expended to date. If you are halfway through the project based uh, on the earned value that's been calculated, the index will be 0.5, representing 50% uh, through the project budget. This index does not use actual costs incurred, since uh, there are many times that uh, the actual costs that are expended on a project are not a very good guarantee of project progress. This index is useful when there's a high degree of confidence that the baseline that was defined for the project uh, is going to be very accurate. The formula is seen here, which is the earned value is divided by the budget at completion, uh, the baseline total budget. The next index, the percent complete index by cost, PCIC, uses actual costs expended on the project and the adjusted or revised total budget for the project, uh, the estimate to completion or EAC to obtain its value. This index is favored over the PCIB many times uh, because it accounts for changes that are occurring in a project budget. As with many index values, uh, a value of 1 shows that a project is on track, whether it is by schedule or cost. A value under the 1 shows that the project is over budget or behind schedule, and a value over 1 outlines that a project costs are under what was budgeted or were uh, ahead of schedule. Uh, here's a graph showing project progress through reporting 7 uh, for the example that was shown in our textbook. Uh, this indicates the project is behind schedule with a schedule uh, performance index of 0.8 that's also over budget based on the uh, CPI value of 0.7. The PCIB shows the project is 50% through the planned budget, uh, which is the BAC, budget at completion for the project. If you recall, this digital camera project was originally scheduled to be completed in 14 reporting periods, hence 50% uh, through for P P the PCIB value. Typically, a project manager will use the percent complete value provided by the project resources assigned to a work package to calculate uh, the earned value. To avoid subjectivity that's sometimes associated with this self-reporting, there are different rules of thumb a project manager might consider using when determining earned value. The first one is the all or nothing rule. A task is left at 0% complete until and when it's completely done when it's assigned a value of 100% complete. Obviously, for tasks that are longer in duration, uh, the problem with this method is that the project manager won't know they're behind schedule until the due date for the task has passed. This is only useful for tasks that are of short duration, usually uh, under one or two weeks. Second rule that could be applied for earned value calculation is the 50-50 rule. Uh, task is set with 50% of the work completed at the point work begins on a task. And it stays at this value until it's completed, at which point it is then uh, established at 100% complete. 
Like the all or nothing rule, this is only useful for tasks of short duration. The final rule, and one that I've used in the past, is called percent complete with weighted monitoring gates. This method sets up monitoring points within the task. Try to find some type of tangible evidence that proves where a task stands towards its completion. There are established monitoring points in the task where this expected evidence can be uh, demonstrated to validate whether the task is truly on track or not. For example, you might have monitoring points established at each quarter for an expected task, and then we'll apply the percent complete uh, by quarter uh, as you see those evidence points. There are also two final earned value rules that can be used to revise estimates of the future project costs, those represented by the estimate at completion. The first rule, the EAC revised, has experts change the original baseline estimates because more current information suggests that these original baseline estimates were inaccurate and need to be adjusted. It uses the actual cost and the estimate to completion uh, to come up with the revised estimated cost at completion. This method is almost only ever used with very small projects. The second rule, the EAC forecasted, uses the actual cost again, like the first rule, to come up with the revisions to the original baseline budget. But the real key is it uses the cost performance index for the project forecasting on how much of the remaining task work will cost the overall project. This method is one that is typically used for larger projects. Here's the formula for the EAC forecasted calculation. Again, the formulas for these are found in your textbook and the cheat sheet that I provided in Sprintboard. Here's an example of a project status report showing these other project status values, uh, including the cost performance index and the estimate at completion uh, forecasted. Here's an example of a status report showing the various earned value uh, metrics associated for multiple initiatives. Some final points made in Chapter 13 uh, point out to other control issues that can affect the baseline budgets and the estimates for projects. First is something we discussed early in the semester regarding scope creep. Changes are often requested in the requirements for a project. You want to keep your customers happy, so a project manager uh, many times will agree to additional requirements being added to a project based on their request. <clears throat> <clears throat> many times what happens is the cumulative effect of this is the added requirements make some big changes to the project schedule and budget. <clears throat> so as discussed earlier in the semester, a formal change management process should be built into the project to avoid scope creep, whereby changes to the re uh, requirements need to go through a formal approval process to be added to the project. Through this process, a change to the project baseline can be made based on the results of a change request. Data acquisition can be a problem and a huge overhead cost, as our textbook suggests. As I've uh, hinted earlier, I've had resistance from project team members in the past to provide weekly information on the project. Methods to determine the pro percent complete, like we discussed earlier, can be used to help with these type of situations. Another technique I have used in the past is to have tasks with no duration longer than one or two weeks. That way you know uh, relatively soon, uh, in fact one week at the most, whether you're going to be able to finish a task on time or not. Obviously there's some issues with having all tasks set up with that type of duration, but uh, it is possible when necessary. Uh, for big long projects, uh, the general rule of thumb is to, as accurately as possible, get the percent complete on tasks that are critical. Uh, and that's really the only way that you're going to be able to effectively monitor a project. It might require a lot of interaction with the project team uh, but that, again, is one of the key responsibilities for a project manager. 
And here's an example our textbook provides uh, that shows uh, the changes in the baseline. Again, this is typically only done uh, through a formal change management process when a change in the project scope has been approved uh, by the executive leadership at the organization. And finally, uh, getting the project status information to key stakeholders is a critical responsibility for project managers. <clears throat> you pull the data together, but uh, getting that information to the key folks is critical. Here's some suggestions, which again will differ from project to project depending on the length and scope of the project. I typically have weekly meetings with the core project team and monthly meetings for the executive leadership. However, as you get closer to a go-live event for the project, uh, these meetings are typically held on a much more frequent basis. Again, as a project manager, monitoring the status of projects and communicating the status is one of your key responsibilities. So this is uh, definitely one of the key chapters for our textbook. These earned value-based uh, formulas are central to the effective monitoring projects and being an effective project manager. And again, you will need to know these uh, and will be tested on these as part of the PMI certification exam. Good luck on the quiz. See you all next week in the lab at CBA.